All right, so today I'm gonna to help you pick out the best codec to export your footage as. The one that's gonna give you really good file sizes, really good compression, and not give you any weird shit like color shifts or really, really degrade your footage in a lot of ways. This is, this is good for retaining a lot of bit depth. Uh, because we're in a world right now where like footage size is getting huge. Uh, what we're looking at right here is full on red raw. The file sizes are really big. This is 17 seconds worth of footage. It's almost 3.9 gigs. It's really, really intense. And a lot of computers have trouble handling that. So this is just a way to where whenever your project is all said and done, like what is the best way hands down to like export your footage as. And I've got a bunch of examples. I've got a whole handful here. And I'm just going to go through each one of them one by one and show you kind of the pros and cons, go over file sizes and, and any weird stuff that may happen. And, and just try to give you some suggestions on the route that you should probably take uh, when doing this. And of course, this is completely subjective. Everyone has their own way. And I'll touch on that a little bit, but let's just dive right into it. So here we have the red raw footage. This is straight up uncompressed right out of the camera, brought into After Effects. I've got little labels on everything, so it, it won't be that hard to like, it won't, it'll, it'll be harder to get confused. Um, and the first thing that you're gonna notice is that this footage is like really dark, really super dark, really super grainy. Uh, it's kind of worst case scenario footage. And uh, that's why I chose it, because I'm gonna push it in a lot of ways uh, so you can really, really see. So I've got a color check option here that's going to really, really blow it out so you can see how bad the grain is and, and what the colors are really, really accurately like. So this is how it is natively. This is it after I've like really jacked it up. And what I'm going to do is export it out as a multitude of different codecs and then apply this jacked up color on it to see how much it actually changes. You can get a really, really good comparison as to how much it changes from the source footage to the codec that you're going to be using. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the noise from this footage because it's gonna be really hard to get a good comparison with all this crazy shit going on. Uh, I have a tutorial coming up that I'm gonna show you how to remove the noise and, and go over that and all the different options and everything. That's gonna come after this one. But for starters, I'm just gonna turn it on. So bam, right here, we have a denoised version. This is it natively. And it really punched that stuff out really, really well. Uh, but once, of course, I jack it up, and look at it like this, you can see that there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's still noise in this footage. There's still kind of like splotchiness and all that stuff. You're not gonna push the footage this far, but this is just showing you how far you can push the red raw 4K footage. Now moving on to the first codec that I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be uh, H.264. And here's H.264 as compared to the red raw footage. Oof, like H.264, is really rough man it's really really brutal it compresses the shit out of your footage and i understand why a lot of people gravitate to h264 when it's not super dark footage that's like working with a lot of out of focus stuff you can't notice a whole lot of this crazy bullshit going on it's a clear step down it's really really ugly i'm not a fan of h264 even though you get really really great file sizes out of it so if you're looking at the file size chart that i have right here H.264 is 15 megabytes for 10 seconds worth of footage at 4K. All of this footage is at 4K. So, I mean, I understand why you would want to use it. I really do. It's really, really small. But man, the loss in quality that you're looking at is too brutal to bear. I mean, you know, and my thoughts on H.264, it's, it's all right. It's not the best. It's kind of bullshit, honestly. I would never use it. I never want to receive a file in H.264. I get that it's really, really small. It compresses it down a ton, makes the footage a whole lot easier to work with. Maybe if you really just want proxies of your footage, this will work. But H.264, I would avoid like the plague. And, and, and one more thing about H.264 when you're looking at H.264, aside from the huge downgrade in quality, it's a super pain in the ass to render off of a high-end machine. A weird thing about H.264 is that if you try to render it off of a PC, it'll error on you immediately. So, so just as a demonstration for H.264, I'm going to make a movie real quick, and I'm going to switch this to H.264. I'm going to give it an output. Totally fine. I'm going to hit render, and you're going to see what happens. That's fucking bullshit, right? Now I looked into this and the reason why this happens is because H.264 
uh, will not render on a computer that has 12 cores or higher. Which means if you have a really good computer that's kind of built for <laughs> built for the industry and, and kind of a workhorse machine that has a lot of cores to do a lot of stuff, then that means that H.264 won't render on your stuff. And I'm going to make a video on how to render H.264 uh, after this one, so stay tuned for that. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, I hate that it does that. I hate that it's a super inferior bullshit plugin that just looks terrible and is also a hassle to render. It's kind of a slap in the face. But for anyone who wants to know how to do it, I'll make a video showing you how. Now moving up to another codec from H.264, something with a little bit better quality. It is the Photo JPEG. Photo JPEG is pretty good. Um, you can see that there's a, a huge step up from H.264. So if you're looking at H.264 as opposed to Photo JPEG, it's clearly a superior codec. But here's where we get into the nitty gritty of codecs, right? I'm going to compare it directly to the Red Raw. And here's the Red Raw. Now immediately you can see that if you go to Photo JPEG and Red Raw, there's a big color shift, uh, a huge color shift actually. Like a lot of the uh, the magentas and the purples and 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 a lot of that stuff in the original Red Raw footage, especially up in this area, is completely gone in the Photo JPEG. It, it nullifies all of that color information, and that's the first sign that you don't want to use that codec because if you're going to take these things and export them out and send them to a color artist and they color the hell out of them but then there's this big color shift that's happening whenever you export this stuff and it's only going to get worse as you iterate you want to avoid codecs like this a lot it's a good codec it doesn't look too bad it preserves a lot of the quality of the footage but that color shift is just unacceptable and even if you turn this color check off and you look at them back to back it looks like nothing changed, which is nuts. Photo JPEG, Red Raw. Photo JPEG, Red Raw. You can't even notice on the original footage, but the second you get in there and start color correcting, this shift gets really, really noticeable. So again, Photo JPEG, I would avoid it. I would not use it just solely based on that color shift alone um, because you want your footage to be as close as humanly possible to what you're working on in, in your editing software. Uh, especially in terms of like color correction and stuff like that. You don't want stuff to suddenly change when you export the footage because then you're going to get a lot of people that are like, what the fuck's happening? So next up is a really popular codec. Everyone loves it. Everyone in the Apple loves it. It's the ProRes 422. Now ProRes 422 is in a lot of ways really, really a really great plugin. It's, and again, when you're looking at this back to back, this plugin is super awesome. Like a you'll notice a little bit of a shift that's just the natural rigors of compression uh, this plugin is really really awesome i get why a lot of people use it you can get really really up in on here to look at the details on something and when you sn when you switch back and forth no one's gonna know honestly this is a five star plugin i get why people use it as long as your settings are right and you're not messing anything up uh, this thing should come out looking remarkably close to the source footage. Uh, ProRes 422 is a fantastic plugin. I recommend anyone using it. The file sizes are also really, really good. If you look at the chart here, ProRes 422, it's it's a of course it's not the H264. ProRes 422 at 10 seconds is almost a gig. So you're looking at a gig for every 10 seconds, and while that is a lot, it's not a lot when you think about the pre the preservation of the quality of the footage. It, it really holds on to it really, really closely. It's a great plugin, and if you have the space for it, clearly it's going to be a lot better than working on the red raw footage, which is going to run you almost two gigs for every 10 seconds, pretty much. I highly recommend it. I see why a lot of people go with it. You can't really go wrong if you use it. It's clearly a superior option to photo JPEG. I mean far superior to photo JPEG and it just fucking shits on H.264. I mean, but really in this comparison video, everything's going to shit on H.264, including me. Additionally, when you're looking at 422 as opposed to the source footage, I mean, it is almost an unnoticeable difference, honestly. Like, it would take a well-trained eye to, to notice the difference between ProRes 422 and, and the Red Raw. So again, great plugin, can't go wrong, use it if you can. Uh, there is there is a caveat with ProRes 4.2.2, especially if you're working on a Windows PC. Pro, Windows uh, After Effects on a Windows machine or, or 
or Premiere on a Windows machine cannot natively render out ProRes 4.2.2. You need a special plugin. I'm going to work on a video immediately after this to show you how to render out ProRes 4.2.2 on a PC and uh, stay tuned for that one. So here we have a double whammy. Um, we've got the DNX HR. Here is the DNX HR as opposed to the Red Raw with my color check applied. Bam. Uh, in DNX HR 8 bit, uh, you can see that it doubles down on color shift, much like the way that Photo JPEG did. If you look at Photo JPEG as opposed to the Red Raw and then Photo JPEG, it removes a lot of that magenta and the purples. But in DNX HR 8 bit, it's really interesting. It it amplifies those colors for some weird reason and i don't really know why it's really really subtle honestly if you turn this color check off and you look at them side by side you're not gonna notice that but when you apply this thing you can see that it's a little bit more purple than it probably should be in a couple of areas it's the slightest of shifts and this is with the 8-bit now this was in the endeavor of trying to save space so there is a 12-bit option. So when I turn the 12-bit option on for DNX HR, you can see that that over saturation of the purple that the 8-bit applied is gone now. It's actually, the 12-bit is super, super close to the Red Raw 4K. Now, what's crazy about this is now it's virtually indistinguishable from the ProRes 422. So if you look at them back to back, I mean, of course, the the you know you'll get some swimming in the noise and everything, but man, like it's, it's, it's really crazy. So I actually think that DNX HR and ProRes 422 are virtually indistinguishable from the source of Red Raw. Virtually indistinguishable. I don't think that, that, that even a trained eye would be able to notice the difference in these things. Um, they're both super fantastic plugins. I recommend not going with 8-bit. You think it's going to save you file size, but check this out. I rendered out the 8-bit DNX HR 8-bit DNX HR 12-bit for at a 10-second test. The 8-bit is bigger than the 12-bit by two megabytes. Why that is, I have no idea. Uh, you would think that it would make it significantly smaller. You're getting more quality with the 12-bit than you are with the 8-bit and a smaller file size. Even if it's 2 megabytes, it still matters. And again, when you're comparing it to the ProRes 422, which is 971 megabytes for 10 seconds, as opposed to the DNX HR 12-bit, which is 914 megabytes for 10 seconds, I would just go with DNX HR. It's a great plugin. It's smaller by 60 megabytes. And over the course of a 30, 40, 50 minutes worth of footage, however much you have, depending on what you're filming, what you're creating, that save in space is going to super add up. So, I mean, I don't see a really good argument as to why. When you look at the comparison straight up, they're almost identical. One's smaller than the other, and they're both immensely on par with the source material. I actually think the DNX HR is closer to the source than D than ProRes 422. Now, I mean, that's just subjective. They're almost virtually identical, and you can't really go wrong with either one. The plus is that DNX HR, uh, you can render on a PC really easily. It's not a problem at all, as opposed to H.264 and ProRes 422, which are a super hassle to render on a PC. So moving on to the last codec I have is one that I kind of got into using a lot, but you know, once I started noticing the little bitty differences, I've kind of abandoned it since. It's the GoPro Cineform codec. Uh, it's a really, really good codec. It's got bigger file sizes. Uh, I, I liked it a lot for a little while, but then I got into the nitty gritty of like what it does. And you can see here immediately, like it again, much like the DNX HR 8-bit, it doubles down on amplifying like the purple hues as opposed to the source. Uh, so you see that this purple up here is like much more prominent than in the red raw footage with this color check on. This is another case where if you look at them side by side as a, you know, on the native video without any like extreme pushing of the colors, you'll notice here that they're virtually identical, much like DNX HR 12 bit, DNX HR 8 bit, <laughs> ProRes 422. They all look virtually identical, but this is... This is in a realm when we're like an extreme color correction. Red, the whole purpose of shooting in Red Raw is to have this like immense flexibility with what you can do with the footage and post. And uh, you really, really can't settle for stuff like this, this, this massive color shift, much like the Photo JPEG color shift 
it's really, really brutal, and it gets more noticeable when you compare them to each other, but as opposed to comparing it to the source footage, you'll know that the GoPro Cineform just pushes it a little too far, and uh, that, that, would, that would lose a recommendation for me. I wouldn't want to use that because, again, you're looking at a color shift. If you're sending it to a color artist, then you're going to get that little, bitty, that little bitty difference, and if he uses that codec to send it back to you, then that's doubling over the compression. It just turns into a real huge hassle. You want to use something that's a as comparable to the source as humanly possible. And I think the clear winner here is DNxHR 12-bit. It's got a really good file size. It's really solid. I don't have a problem with it at all. It's really easy to work with. It makes your footage move a whole lot faster. It's virtually indistinguishable from the source material. It cuts down on the file size immensely. When you're talking about GoPro Cineform right here in terms of file size, you can see here that Cineform really really doesn't do you any favors much like photo jpeg doesn't do you any favors photo jpeg is way too big for its own good gopro cineform is 1.1 gigs as opposed to the i think the superior dnx hr dnx hr 12 bit which is you know 200 megabytes give or take smaller and also looks better so i'm not seeing a huge reason why Given this comparison test, why you would go with anything aside from DNxHR 12-bit. Of course, it's a toss-up between ProRes and DNxHR. These two, I believe, are the clear winners. Do not go with DNxHR 8-bit. Do not go with GoPro Cineform. Do not go with Photo JPEG. And never, ever, ever go with H.264. Ever. So this is my little codec comparison as opposed to the source material. For one last wrap-up, for you to see the differences, here is H.264 with my color check applied. Here compared to the red raw. Here is Photo JPEG with the color check applied as compared to the red raw. ProRes 422 compared with the color check applied compared to the red raw. DNxHR with the color check applied compared to the red raw. DNxHR 12 bit with the color check applied compared to the red raw and GoPro Cineform with the color check applied compared to the Red Raw. Uh, I think that the clear winner here is DNX HR 12-bit. For the file size that you're dealing with and the quality of the footage, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, it's really, really good. You turn off this color check, it's virtually indistinguishable. I can zoom in and you won't even probably know when I'm switching back and forth. So just so you know, because you can't see my little label, this is Red Raw. This is DNX HR 12 bit. I mean, you decide ultimately. But that's a little uh, example that I wanted to toss out for everyone just so they can see the differences themselves. Uh, ultimately, it's up to you what rig you're working on, what system you're working on, what operating system, everything. Uh, but I just thought I would throw this out here. I'm, I stick with DNX HR 12 bit. I think it's a fantastic codec. If you have one that you think belongs on this list, be sure and give it a shout out. I'll make another comparison video if I get an, if I get like five more. Uh, if I get if I get if I can get like five more, five or six more solid codecs that are different from the ones that I'm demonstrating here, I'll make another comparison video using this same footage because I like to know what the absolute best of the best is. And right now, the bang for your buck comes down to DNX HR 12 bit. I think it's the best one that you can use. It brings down the file size immensely. It's extremely high quality, and you can do a lot with the footage and post. And it really, really saves you the hassle of working with super processor intensive uh, red raw footage. Uh, and if you have to compress your footage, which a lot of people do because they're working on weaker systems, older systems, what have you, uh, I, I think you really can't go wrong. It's a fantastic plugin, and I, uh, I hope you give it a shot yourself. Uh, anyway, take care.